So we're going to be looking at the Latin square design. Unfortunately, this time we cannot use our graphical calculator to help us with this uh, in the same way as we did one factor analysis variance and two factor analysis variance because our calculator can't do it. So we've got to do it all by hand and we've got to be very careful and we need to double check everything that we are doing. So this is an extension of a randomized block design, but this time we're controlling two factors and we have our treatment factor. Uh, we still have three assumptions so that the population at each factor level is approximately normally distributed. These normal populations have a common variance and there is no interaction between the three factors. So we have our treatment factor and our two blocking factors and none of them are interacting with each other. So we have our SST formula. We have our SSR formula, our SSC formula, our SSL formula, and our SSE formula. There is just a little error in the notes, if I just go back a page. Here, this one here should say squared on the denominator. So here, that should be an N squared. So if you could just add that to your notes. Uh, and as you can see, this T squared minus N squared just as with the one factor analysis of variance where we had a look at how we would do it longhand, they all have take away the same thing on the end. So that's quite easy to remember. Uh, in order to find our test statistic, we are going to have to put them in a similar table to what we did before. So we're going to be looking at the uh, differences that are happening between the rows, the columns, the letters, and we're going to have an error and a total. And our test statistics are going to come from our F ratio here in the last column they're going to be our test statistics for again between the rows for between the columns for between what we're going to call the letters our second blocking factor so we're going to do an example here we're trying to compare three brands of petrol using three makes of cars each car is driven at a steady speed either 50 kilometers an hour 75 kilometers an hour or 100 kilometers an hour around an oval track so they are our three factors petrol car and speed the cars were each filled with 30 liters of petrol and driven until it was used up and the distance traveled were recorded to the nearest 100 meters in our table here and we're going to investigate the difference between the three brands of petrol so that's what we are testing now, usually when we get a Latin square design question, we were not going to have our data represented like this. It's more likely to come to us in a table like the now you try question. However, sometimes they could give us data like this here, which means I'm going to show you how you get from data being in this form to being in the form like it is in the now you try question. So to start off with, we need to uh, choose what we're going to have as our column and our rows. So I'm going to have fuel going across the tops and I have fuel type A, type B and type C. And then I'm going to have speed going down the side. So speed, 50 kilometers an hour, 75 kilometers an hour and 100 kilometers an hour. And I'm going to be making this into a table where my nine values that are in the table above can be put. So now we're going to go through the list and we're going to add these values to the table. So car type one was at a speed of 50 kilometers an hour using fuel type B. So 50 and B and that was 347 8. And I'm going to put a 1 in there to show that that was using car 1. Next, we have speed 75 kilometers an hour using fuel type C, and that was 331.4. And again, that was using car type 1. So I'm just going to put a tick next to these so I can see which ones I've put into my table down here. Third, uh, car 1 was 100 kilometers an hour using fuel type A. And that gave us 275.8. And again, that was using fuel type 1. So next was car 2s. Uh, so speed 50, 
fuel A, so speed 50 fuel A, that was 365.4, and that was car type 2. Car type 2, 75 kilometres an hour, fuel type B was 339.8, and that was car type 2. And the last of car type 2 was 100 kilometres an hour, and fuel type C. So 100 and fuel type C, that was 298.9, and that was car 2. Now this is a bit of like a Sudoku where we'll end up with a 1, a 2 and a 3 in each row and column. So then for C, sorry for car type 3 even, uh, we've got 50 kilometres an hour fuel type C. That gave us 318.9 and that was car type 3. Just doing them in a different colour so I can see the difference between them for later. 75 kilometres an hour fuel type A gave us 302.2, sorry, 302.2, and that was car type 3. And again, car type 3, 100 kilometres an hour fuel type B gave me 271.8. And you can see what I was meaning before about there's a 1 in each column, there's a 2 in each column, there's a 3 in each column, and it's the same for the rows as well. Now, because we're testing the fuel, the petrol, we're going to have H0 mu A equals mu B equals mu C. H1 at least two means differ. And we can add a little bit extra information. So, for example, where mu i is the, sorry, is the population mean, just re put that bit on, uh, the population mean distance travelled using fuel type I. So in a similar way to uh, what we had when we were having a look at the long way of doing the one factor analysis of variance, we need to find our totals. But this time we're not just looking at the totals for the rows and the columns. We're going to be having a look at the totals for our different types of cars as well. So instead of adding them onto the table, I'm going to do them separately over here. So we're going to start off with the columns. So I'll have column one column two and column three so i'm working down and i'm going to add the numbers in each column together so in our first column going down we have 365.4 plus 302.2 plus 275.8 and that gives us 900 943 .4. In our second column, we have 347.8 plus 339.8 plus 271.8. Like I said in the beginning, you need to constantly be double checking that you type these numbers correctly into the calculator or everything goes wrong very early on. So 959.4 for our second column there. And the third column, 318.9 plus 331.4 plus 298.9. And that gives us 949.2. We're now going to do the same things for our rows. So we're going to have row 1, row 2 and row 3. Adding up going across the rows this time. So we're going to have 365.4 plus 347.8 plus 318.9 which gives us 1032.1 row 2 we've got 
plus 339.8 plus 331.4. So that's 973.4. And last row, 275.8 plus 271.8. Plus 298.9, which gives us 800, 846.5. So as I said, the whole reason why we weren't adding this to our table was because we uh, needed to do it for our letters as well. So we're going to have L1, L2 and L3, where we're adding it up for the different types of cars. So this is why, when I made my table here, I did it in different colours so they were much easier for you to see. You could also, because the data started off in this table here, you could add them up from there. Okay, so you've got those two options. So we're going to add up the different types of car. So that's 347. Sorry, I forgot to change over to my calculator there. There we go. 347. 0.8 plus 331.4 plus 275.8 and that gives us exactly 955 for our number ones for our car number twos we've got 365.4 plus 339.8 plus 298 Point nine, and that gives us one thousand and four point one. And last one for car three, we have three hundred eighteen point nine plus three hundred two point two plus two hundred and seventy one point eight which gives us, just double checking, I've typed all that into my calculator correctly. Yes, it looks like I have. Uh, that gives me 800, I'm going to have to squeeze in a little bit, 892.9. So we also need T, which is our total total. Now, we actually have three ways of checking this because we've got the total for our columns, we've got the total for the rows, and we've got the total for the letters. So either all the columns added up together should be the same as all the rows added together should be the same as all of the letters, the L's, uh, our car, types of car added together. So we have 943.4 plus 900 and. 59.4 plus 949.2 which gives us exactly 2,852. Now if I just wanted to quickly double check that I could do 1,000 sorry about that again uh, we could add our rows together so 1,032.1 plus 973.4 plus 846.5 and we can see there that it gives us the same total so we've done that correctly and again you could check it with the different types of car last thing that we need to calculate before we can start making our table of results is the sum of the sum of the x i j k s squared so the sum of the sum of the x, i, j, adding on our k now, squares. And remember, all that that means is that you're adding all the numbers together and squaring them as well. So that's 347, 347.8 squared plus 331.4 squared plus 275.8 squared plus 
4 squared plus 339.8 squared plus 298.9 squared plus 318.9 squared plus 302.2 squared plus 271.8 squared. Oh, I know when we put all that into our calculator, we get 912,076.14. So we've worked out all the little bits that we need. The last thing I just need to state is that N, well, I've got three different types of cars, three different types of fuel, three different speeds, and that's three. Ugh. So if you're wanting to, you can take a little break before we start figuring out our SSs. Uh, but if you are happy to carry on, I will. So if you're wanting to pause, do so now if you're needing a break. Okay, so we're going to be using the formulas which start on the previous page. So this SST formula here, remember making sure that you've added that squared onto the end there. Uh, the SSR, the SSCs, the SSLs, and we're going to take them all away to find the SSEs. So we're going to start off with the SST because that is used in the other formulas. So we need to do that one first. So our SST, looking back at the formula, you'll see that it's the sum of the sum, sorry, that sum looks a bit weird, of the XIJK squared minus T squared over N squared. So that means I'm doing my 912,076.14. Take away my 2,852 squared over 3 squared. So just going to pop that into my calculator. Uh, because I've got that still there in my calculator, I am going to save some time by just clicking answer. Minus 2,852 squared over three squared and that gives me and for now I am going to write it all down just so that uh, I can decide my significance later so that's 8309.028889 so next I'm going to have a look at my SSC so that is going to be the sum of all of those columns, all of those C values that I worked out squared, each of them being over N. So it's that that's been the sum of. It includes the N on the denominator. Minus the T squared over N squared, like I stated earlier. Uh, it's the same thing on the end of each one. So that means that we're going to have, I've just scrolled up a little bit so I can see them. We're going to have... 943.4 squared over 3 plus 959.4 squared over 3 plus 949.2 squared over 3. So I've got those values from my C's here. It's this one here. I've squared each of those numbers and divided it by 3. All of that is going to be minus our 2,852 squared over 3 squared. So again, we need to put this into our calculator. I strongly suggest using the fraction button. 943.4. Remember, it's only the numerator, the top, that's being squared. Divided by 3. Plus... 959.4 squared over 3 plus 949.2 squared over 3 minus 2852 squared 
over 3 squared. And that's really important that that denominator there is being squared, which gives us 43. And again, I am going to write it all out for now. Just extend my page a little bit. 43.742. So next, we're looking at our rows. So I'm going to be squaring each of these values this time, adding them together and dividing them by three. So my SSR is going to be the sum of my RIs squared over N. Let's extend that bracket a little bit so you can see that it's all of that. Minus T squared over N squared. So we're going to have, try and fit it all on, 1032.1 squared over 3 plus 973.4 squared over 3 plus 846. Point five squared over 3 minus our 2,852 squared over 3 squared. So again, putting that into our calculator, we have 1,032.1 squared over 3 plus... Uh, 973.4 squared over 3 plus 846.5 squared over 3 minus our 2000 852 squared over 3 squared and that gives us 599 so 599.628889 last one before our, we make our table these do take quite a while to get through uh, is the SSL. So this time we're going to be squaring these values here, these ones up in this corner. So we're going to have 955 squared. So the SSL, sorry, is the sum of the LIs squared over N minus T squared over N squared. So as I was just saying, sorry, we're going to have 955 squared over 3 plus 1004.1 squared over 3 plus 892.9 squared over 3 minus 2852 squared over 3 squared. So, popping that in our calculator again, 955 squared over 3 plus 1004.1 squared over 3 plus 892.9 squared over 3 minus our 2,852 squared over 3 squared. And that gives us 2,070.295556. So we have now figured out all of our SS's, the sum of our squares. Okay, we have our SST here, 
We have our SSC here. Here's a result from the we have our SSR here and we have our SSL here. So now we can make our table. Remember the table of values, if I just scroll all the way back up here, our table is going to look like this one here. So we're going to have our source of variance. If I just extend my page a little bit. We're going to have our source. But we need to be doing this in context. So instead of, I'm going to put my columns first because I figured that one out first out of my SSC, SSL, SSRs. So my C, my columns, if I go back to my table, was the fuels. So I'm, instead of putting between the columns, I'm going to put between the fuels. And if you need to remind a, a reminder, you could put a C there to remind you that that means the columns. Then instead of between the rows, so between the, and if we have a look at the table, our rows is our speeds. So between the speeds, and again, we could put an R there to remind us that that means we're talking about the rows. And then the letters, okay, the numbers that we added into the table, remember that that was what type of car was being used. So I'll just make my page a little bit longer. Uh, so between the cars, and remember I just said that that was the L's. Remember that we also have the error or residual, and then we have our total. And we're making it so that it's like the table uh, above. So we're going to have lots of columns. That's why I'm doing my lines so long. Can't draw them in a straight line anymore. Uh, so I'm going to have first my S, S. Okay, my some of the squares that I've already figured out. So my S, S, C was 43.742. I'm just going to do them to three decimal places now when I put them into my table, otherwise it's going to take up too much space. My SSR was 5,999.628. Uh, sorry, once rounded, that would be a nine. And my SSLs was 2,070.3 through uh, 296 once rounded. The only other SS I have, as I can see here, is my SST. So that's going to be 8,300. So in the total, 8,309.029. Now, if we have a quick look at this, uh, 43, 5,999, 2,070, that does not add up to give me 8,309. So as it says up at the top, we're going to have to find our SSE by doing our SST, our total, minus the uh, between ones. So we're going to have 8,309.029 minus 2,070. 0.296 minus 5999.629 minus our 43.742. So for our SSE, we end up with 195.362. So the next thing we have to do is our degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom for each of the betweens, and remember, like I said earlier, there'll always be the same amount of them. So it'll either be 333 three, three, or 444 four, four, or 555. Five, five. You'll have three different fuels, three different speeds, three different cars, or four different fuels, four different speeds, four different cars. It'll always be the same amount of each of these uh, factors that we have. So whatever number you have, so whatever your N was earlier, the degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 1. So for the fuel, we have three different types of fuel. 3 minus 1 gives us 2. We have three different speeds. 3 minus 1 gives us another 2. And between the cars, 
3 minus 1, 3 different cars, minus 1 gives us 2 again. For the degrees of freedom of the error, that's going to be n minus 1 times n minus 2. So 3 minus 1 altogether times 3 minus 2. So 3 minus 1 gives us 2. 3 minus 2 gives us 1, which again gives us a degrees of freedom of 2. So the total of that is going to be 8. 2 add 2 add 2 add 2 gives us 8. There is a good way to check that you've done all this correctly. The degrees of freedom for our total should be n squared minus 1. So remember that we had three different ones of each type. 3 squared is 9, minus 1 gives us that 8. So yes, we have done it right. Next, we're trying to find the mean of the sums of our squares, so the mean SS. And to do this, for each of these, we're going to work across and divide. So we're doing our 42, sorry, let me get my highlighter. We're doing our 43.742 divided by 2, and that gives us 43.742. Divided by 2 gives us 21. Oops, sorry, my 2 went a bit funny there. 21.871. I'm going to do that for the same on the next one. We'll have 5,999.629 divided by 2. So 5,999. 629 divided by 2 gives us 2,999.8145 uh, and then between the cars we have 2,070.296 divided by 2 so 2,070 point two nine six divided by two gives us one thousand and thirty five one thousand and thirty five point one four eight and lastly the last one that we need to do this for is our SSE so our one hundred and ninety five point three six two divided by two so one hundred and ninety five point three 362 divided by 2 gives us 97, change over to pen, 97.681. There's no need this time to fill in our totals because we're not using it for anything, we're not using it to check anything. Last column, and remember that this is us now calculating finally our test statistics. This time, we're going to have each of our means of the sum of the squares, so this value here, divided by the mean of the sum of the squares for the error. So each one is going to be divided by the mean of the sum of the squares for the error. So we have 21.871 divided by 97.681. Which gives us not point two two four rounded to three significant figures now. Then we have our two thousand nine hundred ninety nine point eight one four five again divided by our ninety seven point six eight one. So two thousand nine hundred ninety nine. 0.8145 divided by 97.681, which gives us 30.7 to three significant figures. And lastly, Again, I'm going to put a mark at the side this time because this is looking like an awful colour now. We're going to have our 1035.148 divided by this again. Just double checking that that was a decimal point in there, sorry. Yes, that was. Let me just go over that. The decimal point seems to have disappeared. There we go. So, go back down to my calculator. 
0.148 divided by 97.681. There we go. So we've got 10.6 to three significant figures. Now, all the way back at the beginning of this, we were looking for petrol. We were looking for a difference between the brands of petrol. So my actual test statistic is going to be this one here for between the fuels. This is my test statistic. So my TS is 0 0.2. Four. For my critical value, in the same way as we did for the other, uh, other ones of these tests, we go across by the degrees of freedom for between, we go down by the degrees of freedom for the error. And remember, when we're looking that up in the table, we have to just double check that what our degrees of freedom were. Here, they were 5% significance level because it doesn't tell us what significance level to use. So we are going to use a 5% significance level. Again, it's a 5% significance level, sorry, because uh, it doesn't tell us what significance level to use. So we are looking on page 22 of the formula booklet. Remember that we always treat these as one tailed, so we're looking at the F distribution, P equals 0 0.95. We're going across two and down two, which gives us 19. So the critical value would be 19. And remember that uh, we were looking for a big difference between them, and that's only given us a tiny difference between our means. So as our test statistic is smaller than the critical value, we accept H0 at a 5% significance level. There is insufficient evidence to suggest the mean distance is not the same or is different for the three brands of fuel. So we have actually answered the question there, finally. If it then asked us to make a comment about our blocking factors, remembering that the test statistics here, uh, the other two, the 30.7 and the 10.6, would be our test statistics if we were going to have a look at between the speeds or between the different cars. And again, we would end up with the same critical value because they would each be going two across and two down. Um, we can see that actually the good blocking factor was the speed. The type of the car was below our critical value of 19. So the speed was a really good blocking factor. That was a good thing to control because that has a big input on the difference between the means uh, of the different groups. So the 50 kilometers an hour, the 75 kilometers an hour, and the 100 kilometers an hour made a big difference to the distance traveled before our 30 liters of fuel ran out. Thank you very much for listening.